this is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. Our first hymn, 362 in the hymn book, Meekness and Majesty. Let us pray. On this holy day, we give thanks that we can worship together, that we can look at the cross of Jesus and see that meekness and majesty and respond as we look to God. We pray, Lord, that through our worship today, as we journey with you to the cross, we may know that you journey with us, not just as we meet together, but through all the days of our lives. We thank you, Lord, that even though we focus today on suffering and death, 
we know that that's not the end of the story. We know that we can look forward to Easter. But for today, Good Friday, we focus on the cross and the love of God shown in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Some years ago, a friend of mine on a sabbatical went around various churches taking photographs of stained glass windows. And one particular set of stained glass windows followed the stations of the cross. It's one of the things I think that's been focused on more in the Roman Catholic Church, but many, uh, many of us have kind of learned from it, particularly on Good Friday, that focusing on a picture can help us in our own meditation and prayer. And we're going to um, follow these pictures of stained glass windows of the Stations of the Cross. For each picture, there is a short Bible reading and a prayer, and then a pause for our own, a short pause for our own thinking before we move on to the next picture. So we, we begin with the first uh, station, Jesus is condemned to death. The crowd kept urgently demanding with loud shouts that he should be crucified, and their voices prevailed. So Pilate gave his verdict that their demand should be granted. He released the man they asked for, the one who had been put in prison for insurrection and murder, and he handed Jesus over as they wished. Jesus, our brother, we stand in silence as you are condemned by Pilate. Standing in silence is not new to us. We have stood silent as you went hungry by our tables, as you were orphaned in our wars, as you walked powerless in our world. We stand in silence, for we, like Pilate, are bowed, broken, and afraid. Break the chains of the silence which lie so heavily on our lives. Give us courage to speak on your behalf. Amen. So they took Jesus, and carrying the cross by himself, he went out to what is called the place of the skull, which in Hebrew is called Golgotha. Jesus, our brother, 
we watch you bear the cross and do not understand. Our hearts are hardened. We are told that suffering is evil and must be avoided at every cost. We flee sickness, sorrow and pain. You carrying your cross say something different about suffering. Be with us in our sufferings and with all who suffer today. Help us to follow you even when we do not understand. Surely he has borne our infirmities and carried our diseases. Yet we accounted him stricken, struck down by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole. And by his bruises, we are healed. Jesus, our brother, you have fallen with your cross. We wonder if you have not fallen again today. Everywhere we see signs of weakness. In our church, in our nation, in our world. We see dissension, controversy, turmoil. We are scandalized. We do not understand. Our faith begins to falter. Help us to find you hidden in your weakness. Help us to find you beneath the cross. Amen. Then Simeon blessed Jesus and his parents and said to his mother Mary, This child is destined for the falling and rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be opposed so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed and a sword will pierce your own soul too. Jesus, our brother, we are moved by a parent's love for you. We are amazed at your love for us. It is hard to believe you have not lost confidence in us, but we know you have not. Mary saw beneath your grime and agony, she saw your hidden beauty. We trust that you can do the same for us. Amen. As they led him away, 
they seized a man, Simon of Cyrene, who was coming from the country. And they laid the cross on him and made him carry it behind Jesus. Jesus, our brother, we have to admire Simon. He took up your cross and followed you. He had so little doubt, so little hesitation. We see you suffering in all around us, in the poor, in the powerless, in the misunderstood. We are too hesitant to come to your aid. We find so many excuses. We remain aloof. Grant us the wisdom and the courage to help the least of your sisters and brothers and so help you. Amen. By this will all know that you are my disciples, that you love one another. Jesus, our brother, you rewarded the woman for her courage with the lasting memory of your faith. Reward us with the imprint of your face upon our lives. Help us forget our fears and reach out to serve our needy sisters and brothers. And may they see something of your face in us. Amen. Let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the sake of the joy that was set before him endured the cross. Jesus, our brother, you must have been discouraged by that second fall. We too know discouragement. Our best efforts end in failure. Those we love do not seem to love us. Regardless of our efforts, life does not bring peace. What shall we do? We will imitate your example and try again, even in the face of futility. Amen. A great number of the people followed him, and among them were women who were beating their breasts and wailing for him. But Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves 
and for your children. Jesus, our brother, in the midst of your sufferings, you had compassion for others and their pain. We are often so self-centered. We do not see the suffering of others. We want pity, kindness and understanding. We are willing to give so little in return. Help us to forget ourselves. Awaken us to the pain in the lives of others. Amen. Do not be far from me, for trouble is near, and there is no one to help. Jesus, our brother, your third fall is the beginning of your death agony. Our world is filled with dying people, in war, in famine, in hospitals, on our roads. Many this day will die alone May our prayers and your presence be a comfort for the dying, especially those who must die alone. Amen. They took his clothes and divided them into four parts, one for each soldier. They also took his tunic. Now, the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from the top. So they said to one another, Let us not tear it, but cast lots for it to see who will get it. Jesus, our brother, there is something fearful in thinking of you stripped before the crowd. Even the privacy of clothing is taken. You have given up everything for us. We give so little in return. May we have the grace to give, to give of what we have, to help our sisters and brothers suffering all around us. Amen.
when they came to the place that is called the skull. They crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Jesus, our brother, the pain of those nails was unjust. Your hands, which did such good, your feet, which walked on errands of mercy, are now punished. You received little gratitude for the good you did. Why should we expect more for the good we do? Help us to give and ask nothing in return. Amen. It was now about noon, and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon, while the sun's light failed, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Then Jesus, crying with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Having said this, he breathed his last. Jesus, our brother, you have the greatest love for us. What can we say in the face of it? You can only try to imitate you by responding to the sisters and brothers you have given us to love. Amen. For he was cut off from the land of the living, stricken from the transgression of my people. Out of his anguish he shall see light. Jesus, our brother, you are laid in the arms of your mother. The agony is over, but the resurrection is not yet. Your father's plan requires patience. So it is with us. We reach moments when only patience can carry us on. We know that something better will come, but when? Help us to share your patience and the patience of your mother. Amen.
Now there was a good and righteous man named Joseph, who, though a member of the council, had not agreed to their plan and action. He came from the Judean town of Arimathea, and he was waiting expectantly for the kingdom of God. This man went to Pilate and asked for the body of, Ju of Jesus. And he took it down, wrapped it in a linen cloth, and laid it in a rock-hewn tomb where no one had ever been laid. Jesus, our brother, the end of life is so definite. We fear it deep within. We do not want to die. Help us understand that our lives are but a prelude to a new life, a life with your Father. Amen. We've travelled the way of the cross. I hope there's been something in that for us all to think about on this Good Friday. And uh, we're now, at the closing of our service, going to sing the hymn 287, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross.
just before the blessing, a reminder that uh, we still go through from Good Friday until Easter Day. And on Easter Day, the service here is at 3 p.m. Now let us go in peace and in hope and in love. And may the blessing of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, remain with us always. Amen.